This is the Panama Canal. This tiny route handles 40% of American maritime traffic. So, there's a good chance that some of the items inside your home have been shipped through this canal. Annually, the canal moves around $270 billion worth of goods. Thousands of ships pay a fortune in tolling fees to keep it up and running. And that's because the Panama Canal solves a huge problem for maritime traffic. It connects the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean via a short route. If it wasn't for this canal, the vessels would have to take a long detour around Cape Horn in South America, or they would have to cross the impossible Northwest Passage that's frozen throughout the year. That pretty much sums up why everyone prefers the Panama Canal. For decades, the canal has enjoyed a comfortable monopoly until one event changed everything. The Panama Canal has run into a serious problem, a problem that threatens its global monopoly and puts billions of dollars at stake. In short, the Panama Canal is drying. Starting in late 2022, Panama was hit by the worst drought in the canal's history. The unusually low rainfall contributed to a severe drop in water levels. On a normal day, the Panama Canal allows 38 ships to pass through. However, due to the drought, only 24 vessels can make their way. That's why you can see hundreds of ships waiting to cross the line. Some of these ships have to wait 20 days at the very least for their turn. As of August 2023, more than 200 vessels were waiting on either end of the canal. The increased waiting times mean staggering losses for those relying on the Panama Canal. Big businesses in particular can't afford such long waiting times. A Japanese company paid $4 million to skip the waiting line. Another ship paid $2.4 million to secure an early spot for its LPG carrier. This was in addition to the standard transit fee of $400,000. Unsurprisingly, businesses suffered millions of dollars worth of losses while the Panama Canal Authority lost anywhere between $500 million to $700 million. The reason for this is simple. A ship crossing the Panama Canal has to travel through six locks. Three locks are used on either side to raise the vessel and then three on the other side to lower it. A single ship consumes 50 million gallons of water during transit. The lower-than-average rainfall meant fewer ships crossing through the canal, and this situation is likely to continue. The graph here shows the water level of the Panama Canal, and the recent years have been the lowest. As one maritime expert aptly said, this is going to get worse before it gets better. However, the businesses can't afford to sustain huge losses consecutively, and on a personal level, no one wants to have a late Amazon parcel either. That's why, recently, there have been talks to replace the Panama Canal. The first alternative is Mexico's Interoceanic Corridor. This project has a long-standing rivalry with Panama that dates back to the 20th century. In a nutshell, the Mexican Corridor is 188 miles long and connects the port of Coatzacoalcos with Salina Cruz. This corridor is created at the narrowest point in southern Mexico, the Isthmus of Tehuantepec. And the silver lining is that it will only take 7 hours to cross it. On the other hand, the Panama Canal takes anywhere between 8 to 10 hours because ships are slower and it takes time to fill up each lock. This project was launched in 2018 by Mexican President López Obrador to bring economic prosperity to the often neglected southern portion of the country. As part of the project, 10 industrial parks will be created and the ports of Cozococos and Salina Cruz will be modernized. Plans to create this corridor have existed since the 16th century. However, they didn't come to fruition until Porfirio Diaz took over. Under his rule, the railway corridor was completed in 1907. For the first six years, the railway was highly successful, but when the Panama Canal opened in 1914, the railway fell into disrepair. American business owners preferred using the Panama Canal as it was a U.S. project. Naturally, its Mexican counterpart lost its shine. Fast forward to today, the Panama Canal is struggling and Mexico's interoceanic corridor is getting a $7.5 billion makeover. The Mexican government expects to see 300,000 cargo transits each year. Now, here comes the actual question. Can the Mexican corridor replace the good old Panama Canal? There are a few things to consider. 
A freight train and a container vessel have different capacities. While a ship can carry 15,000 containers, a freight train can only take 400. And although Mexico can claim to have a faster transit system, let's not forget the extra time taken to load the cargo on one end and offload it on the other. What do you think about this? Can Mexico's interoceanic corridor beat the Panama Canal? Let us know in the comments. The second alternative is both bold and bizarre. It claims to link the two oceans via a 30-minute journey. As far as speed is concerned, this option seems to be winning over both the Mexican Corridor and the Panama Canal. Just a small distance south of the Panama Canal, a Florida-based company, Zergatran, is pitching an 80-mile tunnel. This $15 billion tunnel is located in northern Colombia on a very narrow swath of land. It uses high-speed maglev trains to transport goods within half an hour's journey. Once a ship arrives at the Atlantic port, robots will sort the container and directly load them on the maglev trains. This process would be repeated on the other side while offloading. Maglev trains utilize magnets to float above a guideway and move without touching the ground. For this particular project, the maglev trains would run inside a tunnel. The air resistance would be reduced, and that would make the trains faster. The highest recorded speed of a maglev is 375 miles per hour. Around the world, there are only six such trains that are operational. Using maglev for bulk cargo is still a new concept. The huge weight of the cargo can compromise speed, and not to mention, since it's still a train, the capacity is limited. This technology does have potential, but requires a bit of faith from investors and a handsome amount of cash. Zergatran is waiting for an initial funding of $75 million to kickstart the project. The company would also require the support of the Colombian government to take this thing off the ground. Only time can tell whether this plan goes ahead or not. We then move towards a third option, which has been around 150 years. In the early 1900s, the United States had two options, either to build a canal through Panama or through another Central American country, Nicaragua. The U.S. Senate voted for the Panama option. It was a relatively easy choice. The route was shorter and, unlike Nicaragua, there wasn't a string of active volcanoes to worry about. However, the idea of a Nicaraguan canal has never gone away. In 2006, Nicaragua's president, Enrique Bolanos, announced a $20 billion canal linking the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. He claimed that the canal could be used by ships that were too large to pass through the Panama Canal. The proposed route would pass Lake Nicaragua in the middle before reaching at the other end. Even though the construction cost was double that of Nicaragua's GDP, the country was looking at the lucrative profits that lay ahead. Indeed, there were speculations that Nicaragua could become one of the wealthiest countries in Central America after the canal's construction. After all, didn't Panama have the same luck? Soon enough, the country found an investor from Hong Kong, a billionaire called Wang Jing. His company, HKND, were given the sole rights to design, construct, and operate the Nicaragua Canal for 50 years. In exchange, the company would pay $10 million annually to the government of Nicaragua. The group began doing preliminary studies and raised a total of $40 billion from investors. However, when the Chinese stock market crashed in 2015, Wang Jing's net worth declined by 84%. His net worth went from $10.2 billion and plummeted to only $1 billion. If that wasn't enough, there was opposition from environmental and local groups. The 172-mile canal would have destroyed wetlands, contaminated Lake Nicaragua's fresh water, and disrupted important waterways in its vicinity. In addition, thousands of locals had to be displaced to make way for the canal. By 2018, HKND closed its office in Hong Kong, and that was the final nail in the coffin. It might seem disappointing to see a promising link shut down like that, but creating a canal is no easy task. Take the history of the Panama Canal, for example. The construction of the canal killed 22,000 workers, bankrupted thousands of investors, and destroyed the careers of two of France's biggest names. This is the story of how the Panama Canal was created. On a side note, if you liked the video so far, kindly take a second to subscribe to our channel. We bring the latest news in construction with two fun videos each week. Okay, now back to the story. The plan to create a canal through Panama has existed for centuries. 
However, the first sincere effort was made by a French diplomat, Ferdinand de Lesseps. He was known globally as the creator of the Suez Canal in Egypt. So, when he pitched the idea of the Panama Canal, everyone jumped at the opportunity. De Lesseps was able to raise considerable funds in France owing to the success of the Suez Canal in Egypt. Now, De Lesseps did get overconfident and treated the project like a piece of cake. After all, the Panama Canal was only 40% as long as the Suez Canal. The crew underestimated the climate of Panama, which is a mix of tropical rainforests with wild animals, insects, and snakes. They planned to build a sea-level canal like the Suez with no locks. This meant that the vessels would have an uninterrupted flow of water without being lifted or lowered. The crew was unaware that the Charges River, the point where the canal started, would rise up to 33 feet in the rainy season. After all, Panama is the fifth wettest country in the world. It's not a desert like Egypt. But the climate wasn't the only problem. Steel equipment, like shovels, rusted rapidly in the rainy climate, and hundreds of men died from yellow fever and malaria. By 1889, the Panama Canal Company was financially ruined after spending $287 million. Almost 800,000 investors lost their money, and as expected, things turned ugly. Several people were arrested, including Ferdinand de Lesseps and Gustave Eiffel. Yes, Gustave was the man behind the Eiffel Tower. Later on, the United States bought the project from France, and in 10 years, they delivered the Panama Canal. Today, this canal accounts for 5% of global trade. In a year, nearly 15,000 vessels pass through this golden artery. So, it's wrong to totally discount the Panama Canal. It will have a strong role in maritime trade for many years to come. Any new canal or corridor would simply be an addition and not a rival to Panama. However, we would love to hear your thoughts on the matter. Do you think any of the proposed alternatives have the potential to destroy the Panama Canal? Let us know in the comments. It's safe to say that any new route would require a strong political and financial backing. On the other hand, the Panama Canal also doesn't want to lose its special status to a rival. So, it won't go down without a fight. In 2015, two new locks were built parallel to the old ones in the Panama Canal. The new locks allow larger ships to pass through and conserve 60% of the water. There's also a proposal to build a reservoir on the Indio River. This reservoir will supply water to the Panama Canal and ensure an adequate supply even during droughts. But before this plan is realized, the Canal Authority has to first seek consensus from the wary public. The locals don't want to give up their homes and rivers in favor of something that destroys their very identity. So, yeah, it's a long wait before any of the above plans materialize. In the meantime, we have another project that will take a long time to become a reality. It's a 20 billion proposal to connect London with New York via an hour-long tunnel. Sounds absurd, but we'll let you decide.